If there is to be a hero, there must be an adversary, an antagonist in the whole drama. This isn't only a common role, it's essential. Today, I ask the question, who is Mara? Within the various forms of Buddhism, Mara is not only the primary adversary, but the counterpart to the various Buddha. He plays the role of the one who tempts and tries the Buddha along with his disciples through their various trips through life and the world of suffering. For all intents and purposes, you can call him a demon. But I wouldn't say it's as simple as that. The position of Mara is a highly divine role and not simply some impish creature. Mara is in some senses the personification of death or the coming of death. Or even the personification of unskillfulness or the death of the spiritual life. He makes the mundane seem alluring and will advocate the negative to have it appear positive. Mara is generally depicted as a hideous, fierce, and fiery demon with eyes wide, fangs visible, and an enraged facial expression. He is even known to, at times, appear as a giant elephant, a cobra, or a bull. He can be seen in the company of his legions of demonic underlings or his three daughters. Traditionally, there are four versions of Mara that are said to exist. Klisa Mara is the Mara that is the embodiment of unskillful emotions, and he is the first of the four. The next and second is Murtiyumara, who is the embodiment of death itself. Death in the sense of the unceasing cycle of rebirth and death. Next, there is Skandamara, who is said to be the entirety of conditioned experience. And lastly, there is Devaputramara, who, unlike the other three, who are said to be metaphors, this fourth Mara is said to actually have an objective existence. Mara is very well known for opposing one of the more popular incarnations of Buddha on his path to enlightenment, where that Buddha was found sitting under a tree and opposed the trials and temptations of Mara. I, however, would like to tell you a slightly different tale of Mara. There once lived a monk who was a disciple of the Buddha. His name was Mogayana, and he was a master of many supernatural skills. Many of the monks had developed certain supernatural skills, yet Mogayana had accomplished the most. So powerful, in fact, he was deemed to be one of the Arahants, a title given to those who had attained enlightenment as a result of listening to and practicing the teachings of a Buddha. Possessing such a well-developed mortal frame, Mogayana was hated by those who were envious. Among the many that would have coveted his power was Mara. Mara made an attempt to enter and possess the mortal frame of Mogayana and tried to proceed by quietly entering into the lower bowels of the monk. Mogayana had no trouble detecting the presence of Mara and quite calmly ordered Mara to vacate his body. Mara was taken aback for a moment, but quickly vacated the monk through his mouth. He was amazed at the speed and ease which with the monk had detected his presence. It was not every day that a man could quickly and easily overcome the demon and this made Mara curious. How did you know of my presence? Tell me, how did you know? Inquired the perplexed demon. The monk admitted to knowing much more than that. In a distant past life, Mogayana admitted that he was Amara himself at one point. The officer animating the role of Mara being no exception to the laws of samsara, subjecting them to both birth and death. During the time of one of the first five Buddhas who were to have appeared, Mogayana was in fact the chief of demons and the lord of the underworld. He went by the name Maradusi, 
who had a sister named Kali. The Mara that stood before Mogayana was actually the son of Kali. In other words, his nephew. After the encounter with Mara had passed, the monk Mogayana was pursued by a band of assassins from a group that were envious of his accomplishments. He managed to use his supernatural powers to remain invisible to his attackers for seven days. On the seventh day, and seeing now that it was time for his own bad karma to fully ripen, Mogayana's powers failed him, and his attackers fell upon him. Apparently, in another of his past lives, he had killed both of his blind parents. Buddhism has many forms, and for all intents and purposes, a wide selection of deities as well. You can find forms of Buddhism that you can explore from China, India, and even Tibet. It might behoove you to check and compare different forms of Buddhism and see what you think. Also remember, Buddha is not someone's name. Buddha is a title. There were many Buddha, a whole realm of Buddha, as a matter of fact. Although, as I always say, the devil's in the details.